viewers welcome to this very special episode of the world ayurveda podcast we have with us dr simon hunzika from switzerland before we go over to her a brief introduction of her uh, she is the medical and academic director of sama which is pronounced swiss ayurvedic medical academy it's it's in functioning since 2003 she is the founding president of the indo swiss ayurveda foundation since 2013 over and above she's been a, a swiss medical doctor trained in naturopathy homeopathy and psychotherapy she decided in 2001 to dedicate her life to the global spread of ayurveda by creating a model for the institutional institutionalization of ayurveda as a medical system in switzerland which was completed in 2016 over the last decade she has dedicated her work to the creation of a unique training program in ayurveda medicine at the cutting edge of integration of authentic traditional knowledge transfer modern technologies advanced didactics and integrative medicine since 2008 2018 she's been actively participating as a who expert and is a co rapporteur in the editing and revision of benchmarks for ayurveda a warm welcome to you dr simon hope you are keeping well and safe thank you very much i'm fine happy to be here so you was this uh, edition of world ayurveda podcast is in alignment with the ayurveda day celebration that the india foundations center for public diplomacy and soft power initiated last year so we'll move into our discussion dr simon your journey i'm fascinated with your journey your journey from art studies to ayurveda what has inspired you to take to ayurveda um it started with the fact that there was a inner call uh, telling me that i had to go towards medicine then i was actually not really happy in allopathy because as an artist deep in my soul this was too technical right it was not an artist is normally related to what is human and uh, i didn't find my real place there and frankly speaking if there is an art i mean medicine is an art fundamentally but perhaps today the way it's practiced it's become less and so i was looking for an art in medicine and being through what you mentioned different trainings i finally found the right place with ayurveda i find it's most beautiful art of practicing medicine so have you studied ayurveda in india who are some of the authentic teachers in india for ayurveda can you uh, please share some experiences see i have studied ayurveda in europe i have studied it also mainly in india of course um i came across cross various teachers india has wonderful teachers and many and i think most of them must even not be known to me but um it's too long to to mention all of them i would say there's been one great inspiring figure which goes beyond just the teacher the master would have been um uh, krishna kumar ji um from the ayurveda he is from yes from ayurveda pharmacy he's it's more than just an, a teacher for ayurveda it was a teach he was a teacher for the right vision for values for and especially for a long term and a large vision and uh, i think he has inspired many many people and just one of of many uh, but i would mention him if i have to say a name yes thank you i'm quite intrigued to know how did you look at institutionalizing ayurveda in your own way that is the ayurveda way in switzerland you see i really made an effort in my humble um position to get as much information as possible about what would be a right according to the shastra so whenever i understood that i had that task or contributing to that task in a major way in the country i immediately linked up with india 
and was looking to find the right people who could inspire me the most authentic way so that what we would do in Switzerland would be in line with the Shastra, with the tradition, because only then it would be sustainable. Dr. Shivam, do you envision Ayurveda to be a contemporary health science? If so, why and how? Oh, of course, it, it, it is a health, it is a, it is a medical system and it is a health science. It is even a, a life science. Uh, it, it's, of course, it's broader than what we understand under medicine, a medical system, but it is effective for chronic diseases, which everybody knows and tells but it is very effective for acute diseases. It is also effective in palliative care. It is effective and it is practiced from primary to secondary to tertiary, tertiary level care. The, I mean, there are institutions working on all these levels in India, also in integration and in integrative medicine with allopathy. And it is taught at universities and degrees in parallel to allopathy. So this is the medical aspect, so definitely is the medical, it is a healthcare system. Now see, what would it need to become more, be understood as a healthcare system? It would need means, it would need money, technology, it would need that the public and the private sector with all the various um, skills and means would come and support and develop it. Because if allopathy has become that healthcare system, if we want to call it like this. The healthcare system, system is the system that the nation puts at the disposal of its people. So a healthcare system is made up of the contributions of all the sectors. So Ayurveda has never received any of these contributions, but that perhaps partly the people also were not open to it because they wanted to preserve, they were afraid that it, it would get diluted. But I think, I mean, we, it, it, this is too late. Uh, dilution has happened in many ways. Today, those who want to develop it have to work in a transdisciplinary way, and then it can become a, a, a real part of a healthcare system. We'll discuss a little bit about Switzerland. Uh, what is the acceptability of Ayurveda like in Switzerland? Is there reaction, opposition, and or support? Are you seeing sincere interest in Ayurveda there? The interest is very sincere and I don't think it's only in Switzerland, I think it's everywhere because it seemingly speaks to the soul of the people, to the very heart of the people. And I can see that on all levels, from simple people or patients to top professors in universities, somehow Ayurveda is speaking to them. And the interest is there on all these various levels. There is openness, there is welcome, definitely. And I would say professionals are more and more interested in getting trained. Patients want that care. Of course, um, also media and uh, others are, are interested in promoting it. Uh, other sectors we know have been promoting it earlier too. And in the government level, it's been fully recognized beside other medical systems like Chinese medicine. So I would say there is it's a real huge acceptance. Of course, like everywhere, people there are there are people are defending their territories. That is normal. But if you look uh, aside aside this, there is huge acceptance. Yes. Tell us about the Swiss Ayurvedic Medical Academy that you founded. In which places is it spread out? How many students and doctors do you have? So we we are, I mean, we are seated at the Lake of Geneva, basically, but we had the opportunity to train students from various countries and our uh, teachers are Indian and also Indians from uh, abroad. And we have right now about 10 doctors working with us in, in, in clinic and academy. So that's the situation. So we are very happy that uh, we, we can touch people even beyond Switzerland. There is that interest I was telling. So um, that's all, that has been the vision of uh, uh, Sama from the beginning is to help spread the, the system. And I think with the training program that we are having, which is um, all in English, uh, mainly given by Indian teachers. I mean, the teachers are Indians, Indian doctors. Um, I think we, we succeed in this. 
what about the genesis of the indo swiss ayurveda foundation what is its scope and activities so indo swiss ayurveda foundation has really been created to set and maintain standards locally regionally and together with india always having that link to india um, because it's the motherland and the right standards we can get them only from there of course we will adjust them with um, other standards culturally um, uh, determined or scientifically here but the, it's a matter of preserving the authenticity of ayurveda in active and support any action and actor who would work towards authentic spread of ayurveda we wanted also to promote the institutionalization of ayurveda as a medical system outside india mainly in the west as we did it in switzerland so it's about um, standard setting preservation of authenticity and institutionalization inspiring dr simon ayurveda embodies the principles of sustainable and natural living um, and it's not just about herbs although it does form an integral part but about philosophy and thoughts can you explain yes it's a nice question because i think actually what patients and even future professionals are looking for is not only herbs and plants and the tremendous uh, scientific concept that is there in ayurveda which is which is very precious but beyond that what they are looking for is that global understanding of the human being and ayurveda says that a body um, spirit and mind is one unit that you cannot separate that means we will have an understanding of each of these units and ayurveda is as far as i understand it the today only remaining medical system where spirituality and the whole understanding of this this dimension is fully integrated not only of course in medical care but in that beautiful um, life science as people say it's it's a philosophy of life it teaches us how to live happy we do not have to become sick before going to ayurveda ayurveda will will is a teaching ayurveda literally translated means knowledge of life and obviously if it is so that body spirit and um, mind are one unit then we cannot say we are a knowledge of life if there is not the full part of its spirituality i just come to one one more question on switzerland before i ask you your vision what is the reaction of other forms of uh medicinal system such as homeopathy in switzerland if you can throw some light it's very positive we do not have any kind of adversities in in contrary to the um, um the leading personality uh in switzerland in integrative medicine is a professor in one of our university hospitals um he has promoted uh ayurveda and has given me the opportunity to teach since 2012 in the university hospital to the medical students he is a trained homeopath and he always said look future is ayurveda and this is the same that i hear from many others so i'm i'm convinced about homeopathy so i don't say only ayurveda is the future but it's true that ayurveda will be closer to reply to the needs of a health system than only homeopathy that that for sure and um, i would say that here in abroad in switzerland we do not feel adversities between the other systems we have been supported we have been encouraged and actually the other systems were ahead in time they were there like 30 years before i mean homeopathy is there for 200 years naturopathy has always been there european naturopathy chinese medicine came like 35 years back so when we came all they they were all um, anthroposophic medicine is there for one century so when we came they had already broken the ice and they had open paths and they had very um very uh, generously opened the doors for us to join them uh, the united nations has 
a you know a vision of 2030 right with their sustainable development goals they want to see the society in a particular way what is your vision for the future of ayurveda let us say you know 5 years from now in 2025 or 10 years from now in 2030 so ayurveda looking at 5 years to 10 years from now i would rather say 10 years because we need little time as see ayurveda as a medical system uh, to be institutionalized institutionalized and promoted is very very recent so we need some time we need to train people then we need to establish institutions we need to bring products on markets all these are complex um procedures that need time and uh, i would say in 10 years i would dream of having ayurveda training authentic high level ayurveda training proposed in most of the countries worldwide um an understanding of the authorities in most of the countries of what is ayurveda and that it is such a precious medical system that can help the people um a spread of the of authentic quality products uh, on markets that will not be recognized only as food supplements or uh, or cosmetics but as i mean therapeutic products of medicines and um institutions practicing it being having trained enough people to offer uh, clinical services to 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 the populations with the promotion that is going along with it it is a huge work right but that the clinics would exist and that there would also be integration that this can also be integrated in existing public health systems and and in and i mean uh, public health settings india of course has a significant youth population uh in your view even speaking from a global scenario how important it is we are speaking of a system that is 5000 years old right how important it is to contemporize this for the gen x and the millennials gen y and why i think that's even that's that's the very most important that was at least my my feeling and the vision for which we have been working is that the gen y are those who are now taking decisions and more and more taking decisions and are the active people who are um working producing i think all of them come progressively to the understanding that we need also a medicine that is caring for health not only for disease and it's for the children it's for themselves it's for future and we need to preserve the planet i mean this has become for for gen y it is obvious and for for the future generations frankly speaking if we don't have a system like ayurveda then i quite don't know exactly how humanity will manage in in terms of health in future so i think it's extremely important it's one of the greatest legacies that india can bestow on humanity for these future generations my final two questions are uh, interrelated in a way but i'll ask them separately cursory reading of some of your talks you have maintained how important quality control of exports of ayurvedic products is essential uh, you have you have uh, facilitated the need for private public players to come together is this a challenge or how can this be attained i mean yes it is a challenge because it is a challenge today in every sector it's not only in ayurveda we live in a world of where to consumption is the most i mean you just want to sell if you just want to sell you do not care for the quality and that's what we are doing we are consuming food that is of poor quality most of things that are produced today are not of the quality that they would have to be handicraft has disappeared the art of i mean knowing to to produce things they they are not no longer there because the industrialization and uh, and i mean huge multinational companies um have replaced the art of doing things not always some of them and sometimes it's also good but obviously in ayurveda um we have to we have to produce at industrial level otherwise we cannot uh, um not 
I mean, reply, we, we cannot do justice to the need. But then how can you do industrial production and maintain authentic, traditional quality? This is definitely a challenge. And I think that the government should co come in with, with some help, technological development, research, and give perhaps even subvention and help for people to do that. Because what, what is the scope for us to train top level people and in India too? if they don't have the right products. I mean, the medicines are the main tools for beside the whole spiritual aspect uh, and nutrition. So it's the same. I mean, if we have poor quality of food, it will also not help. But medicines is a very sensitive point. And it is sensitive also because there are two levels of quality. One is the quality in terms of contamination of heavy metals and so, which will be very, very tightly screened by any authority outside India if we want to bring medicines on the market. And this is where uh, we can be uh, you know, stopped in our process. So that we have to be very careful there. And on the other hand, we should not forget that if we ensure this kind of quality, that we also should ensure the quality of authenticity in Ayurveda in the products because then only we will have the right results. So it's not an easy thing and we I think we have to come together, public and private sectors have to work together uh, because there are a lot of regulatory issues um, and we will, we will need even better documentation to get recognized because if you want to get these products recognized abroad, they have first the documentation, the pharmacopoeias have to be recognized by the FTAs and it starts already there. So public sector is important and then private sector of course has to play the game and probably public sector should support the private sector at least in India to produce such high level uh, products, yes. Uh, that seeds into my final question and you're partly answered too, but how would you envision and say this is the successful globalization of Ayurveda? as a medical system? It is when in every country, it is obvious that Ayurveda should be part and integrated in the public health system, that people should get access to training and patients to care. And in every country where there is reimbursement by insurances, Ayurveda should also be reimbursed and the product should be legally on the market as um, therapeutic products and research should be supported as research for uh, in, in other disciplines is supported. Okay, I'm going to ask you uh, for one word answers to conclude this interview. Uh, perhaps three questions. If you have to describe uh, India in one word, what would it be? Great. If you have to uh, tell our viewers and listeners to follow uh, one Ayurvedic principle, what would it be? Be kind. And if you have to define Ayurveda in one word, what would it be? Luminous. Luminous, great. Uh, Dr. Simone, as you know, uh, we have initiated this nascent effort of marking Ayurveda Day. Of course, the vision is to move towards the World Ayurveda Day someday. Uh, but uh, what would your message be uh, in view of Ayurveda Day this year? It's coming up on November 13th. We are coinciding it with Danvantri Jayanti and also uh, the UNWHO Sustainable Development Goal 3 of promoting good health and well-being. So your message for Ayurveda Day this year for our viewers and listeners. That would be May Sri Dhanvantari's power and light spread throughout the planet and give mankind access to Ayurveda, the knowledge of life. On that inspiring note, thank you so much, Dr. Simone, for taking out your time to chat with us. Uh, it was illuminating, fascinating, and I'm sure our viewers and listeners will take back so much from this conversation because even a layman, our intention is lay common minds understand Ayurveda and take to it. Thank you so much for joining. Viewers and listeners, we hope to have another special guest on the World Ayurveda podcast very soon. Thank you very much. Thank you.